Good day, everyone. Welcome to lecture number 31 of Theory of Computation. And in this particular lecture, we will be discussing about the Turing machines. What are the strengths that are accepted by Turing machines, or we can say the Turing machine acceptance, and what is the language recognized by a Turing machine? So basically, we are going to discuss about the language of Turing machines. So before starting the discussion about the Turing machine acceptance, let's first see what is a hail stone sequence. Hail stone sequence. Okay. What is a hail stone? sequence. Basically, Hale-Stone sequence is like this. So if n is a natural number, if n is a natural number, then if n is equal to 1, so this n is equal to 1, it means done. Done means completed. It is a hailstone sequence that means completed. However, if n is even, okay, then we have to set set n is equal to n by two. However, otherwise, otherwise means if n is odd, okay, otherwise set n is equal to 3 times n plus 1. Okay. So let me give an example. The example is that if let's suppose n is equal to 2, then since n is equal to 2, so here Hailstone sequence is saying that if n is even set n is equal to, so n will be n divided by 2. So what is n divided by 2? 2 divided by 2. And what is that? n is equal to 1. Now n is 1. 1 means stop. Stop means completed. Done. Now this is example 1. Second example is let's say n is equal to 3. Okay. So if n is equal to 3, we have to set. So the new n will be 3 times n. What is n? 3 plus 1. So 3 into 3 is 9, 9 plus 1 is 10. Now what is n here? n is 10. So now n is even. Okay. So since n is even, set n is equal to, so we have to set n is equal to n divided by 2. So that is 10 divided by 2. So 10 divided by 2 is 5. Should we stop? So we should stop only when n is equal to 1. So here n is equal to 5. 5 is n is odd. So we have to set n is equal to 3 times n plus 1. 3 into 5 is 15 plus 1, 16. Now n is even. So n is even. What will be the new n? The new n will be n is equal to 16 divided by 2. What is 16 divided by 2? It is 8. Okay. Again, n is even. New n will be n is equal to 8 divided by 2. That is 4. Again, n is even, new n will be 4 divided by 2. What is that? 2. Again, n is even, new n will be 2 divided by 2. What is 2 divided by 2? 1. So we have to stop here. Stop means completed. So likewise, you can take another example. n is equal to 5. Okay. And complete this procedure. Now, on this hailstone sequence, we can ask a question. The question is given n, given n, okay, does this procedure terminate? Procedure terminate. So we have to answer this question. Okay. So that means it is a problem. So this is a problem and we have to solve this problem. It is saying that if n is given, for example, here n is 3. 
So does this procedure terminate? Yes. It terminates when n is equal to three. It terminates when n is equal to two. Likewise, we can answer whether it can terminate for n is equal to five. We have to carry it out and see whether it can terminate. It can terminate means n reaches to one. So if we are given this n, can we answer whether this procedure terminate? So can we design a Turing machine? Design a Turing machine that can answer this question. Answer this. So let's see whether we can design a Turing machine for that. Okay. So let's say we have to design a Turing machine for hailstone sequence. So how will we design a Turing machine? So let me make you understand. Let's say n is a natural number. Let's say n is equal to uh, any number, for example, three. So if n is equal to three, we can write three in unary format. So unary format means n is, is three. Unary is only written in number in ones. Unary means only ones. Binary means zero and so unary, we can write three in unary format as one, one, one. Likewise, if n is equal to five, we can write n is equal to five as one, 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 five, one. Likewise, if n is equal to six, we can write it as one, 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 one. So if we can see in unary format, if n is equal to three, n is equal to three minus one, one, one. Okay. So here n is, what is n? n is odd. So new n will be three into three plus one. So what is that three into three? Three into three is nine, nine plus one is 10. So that means new n will be one, 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 one. Okay. Right. So this is the unary representation of 10. Now you can say that hailstone sequence in this particular format is if number of ones, number of ones is equal to one, then we have to stop. Okay. Now, if number of ones is odd, sorry, if number of ones is even, if number of ones is even, reduce to half, reduce to half. It means if number of ones is six, okay, then the new number of ones will be only three, reduce to half. If number of ones are odd, then we have to, what we have to do, increase number of ones three times. So increase number of ones to three times plus one, plus one, okay? So this will be an hailstone sequence. Now uh, we have to design a Turing machine and to this Turing machine, we will give a sequence, sequence of ones. So that means we will give n. And this Turing machine will say whether this n terminates or not, whether this procedure terminates or not. That means finally we will have only one, single one. So that means we have to design a Turing machine such that the language of this Turing machine is equal to one raised to power n such that n is greater than zero and the hailstone sequence hail stone sequence terminates for 
it terminates for time. So that means we have to design a Turing machine such that the language of Turing machine is that it will accept only those unary strings such that for those unary strings, this procedure should terminate. Okay, it should terminate. And for all other unary strings for which this procedure does not terminate, it should not accept those strings. Okay, so we have to also understand what is the meaning of acceptance by a Turing machine. We will understand that in a little bit, but first let's see how we can design a Turing machine. Okay, so I will only give an idea here. So the idea is we will have we should know the following procedures. Okay, so let's say we will have Turing machine one. So let's say the job of this Turing machine one is it will it will make the number of ones half. Okay, Turing machine two is it will make the number of ones three times plus one. So Turing machine one can be one subroutine and Turing machine can be another subroutine. So using these two Turing machines, we can design a Turing machine for this particular language. Okay, so I'm not going to discuss how we can design a complete Turing machine for hailstone sequence, but you should make a Turing machine that will do this particular job and another Turing machine that will do this particular job. And then you can combine these two Turing machines to design a larger Turing machine. Fine. So this particular Turing machine, so the Turing machine for hailstone sequence, so let me write it here, Turing machine for any N, what it should do, this particular Turing machine. First, if input has even length, then half how the length of the string that is the first job okay the second job that this turing machine has to do if input has odd length Then triple the length of the string of the string and append extra one and append one. And the third is if input length is equal to one, then exit. Okay. So it should accept only when input length becomes equal to one. So our question is, does this Turing machine stop for all possible n. So that means if we are given n, does this Turing machine always stop? Always stop means does this accept every n for every n? Okay, the answer is no. It is unknown 
it is unknown whether this process will terminate terminate for all natural numbers what does that mean it means that if we are given a string so if we have a string okay any string but it is a unary string okay like this 1 to the power n so for some strings it will accept those strings what does that mean accept means that it will by using this approach it will reach to a point where the length becomes equal to 1 and when length becomes equal to 1 this turing machine will go into the accept state accept state accept state means that it will terminate okay and for some other strings for some other n another possibility is it will run forever forever means it will go into a loop it will never reach to this point okay so it is not running forever it does not mean that it will reject it does not mean that it will reject but we are saying it will run into a loop run into a loop means that we don't know whether it will accept or reject so it is completely going into the loop so for a loop we can say neither accepts nor rejects okay so this is a possibility for this kind of turing machine so from this point we have one important observation what is the observation here the observation is that if we have a turing machine okay we have a turing machine there are three possibilities so if this turing machine is given an input then on this input there are three possibilities it is not only for this turing machine for this hailstone turing machine but it is true for other turing machines as well and what is that if we are given an input there are three possibilities the first possibility is that it will go into an accept state that means it will accept the input accept the input okay the second possibility is that it will go into a reject state so in the first possibility it goes into an accept state and halts halts means stops okay that means it accept the input and the second possibility is it will go into a reject state and halts that means in this case it rejects the input rejects the input. and the third possibility is the third possibility is it will go into a loop okay that means neither accepts nor neither accepts nor rejects okay so these are the three possibilities so if we have a turing machine what i am saying that one is it will accept the input the second possibility is that it will 
reject the input and the third possibility is it will go into a loop so these are the three possibilities so in these two cases in first two cases so if i have an input and the turing machine either accepts the input or goes into a loop in this case we will say it does not reject okay so it does not reject the input in the first case turing machine does not reject that means it accepts accepts means it does not reject or it goes into a loop and when a turing machine is going to into a loop we cannot say whether it accepts or rejects likewise if turing machine goes into these two possibilities either loop or reject then in that case we will say turing machine does not accept if turing machine goes into this particular accept state this one we will say turing machine accepts w accepts w means accepts input so in this case we say turing machine rejects w rejects w means it does not accept this w it goes into a reject state and in loop one we will say turing machine neither accepts nor rejects okay and in these two scenarios this one and this one accept and reject in both these cases we will say turing machine halts halts means it has stopped and in this particular thing in this loop one we will say turing machine goes into a loop so from this observation we will understand the language of a turing machine so the language of a turing machine is w where w is a string w belongs to sigma star such that turing machine accepts w accept us w okay what does that mean it means if we have a w we have some input so this is our input and we give this input to a turing machine if this w if after consuming this w turing machine goes into an accept state then we say this w belongs to the language of this turing machine however if this turing machine goes into a loop or reject then we will say that this wo does not belong to this language so only those strings belong to the language of a turing machine such that the turing machine is taken to an accept state by these input strings okay fine so i can write here so the language of a turing machine is equal to w belongs to sigma star such that w is accepted by a turing machine fine and and for all wo that does not belong to the language does not belong to that language so for those wo for those strings turing machine does not accept so those wo it does not accept that does not belong to this particular language does not accept a means that it either rejects this w reject means that it will go into a reject state or goes into 
loop. Fine. So the language of a Turing machine is the set of strings that are accepted by a Turing machine. And we can say that Turing machine, so this is a language of a Turing machine. So this is a language, language means a set of strings. So Turing machine recognizes this language. Recognizes this language means that for all strings that belong to this language, Turing machine goes into an accept state. So as a result, Turing machine is also called a recognizer. And the language accepted by a Turing machine is called a rec recognizable language. Or we can say it is also called a recursively enumerable language. Recursively enumerable language. So what is recursively enumerable language? Recursively enumerable language is the language accepted by Turing machines. Fine. And Turing machine is called a recognizer for a recursively enumerable language. In our last lecture, that is lecture number 30, we said that we have the set of all the languages, not set of all the languages, but these are the languages language recognized or we can say accepted by Turing machine. So basically we, we are saying that these are the problems. We can also say problems solved by a Turing machine. Okay. So we know languages recognized by Turing machine are called recursively enumerable language. So these languages are recursively enumerable and the subset of this recursively enumerable language is context free language and the subset of context free language is regular language okay so this is for dfas and this is for uh, PDS, push down automatic. You can see the power of, and this is for Turing machines. The power of Turing machines, power of Turing machine is greater than power of non-deterministic push down automata, which is greater than deterministic push down automata, which is greater than NFA. And the power of NFA is same as so Turing machine is the most powerful computational device. And the set of all languages that are recognized by a Turing machine are called a recursively enumerable languages. Now, there is another question that arises here, but first understanding that question, you have to understand that all finite automatas, finite automatas, so what is a finite automata? For example, our DFA is a finite automata, NFA is there and push down automata. So these automatas always halt for all possible inputs. All possible inputs. But this is not true for Turing machines. Okay, so the Turing machine may or may not halt. Okay. So there is a possibility may halt means that it will go into an accept state or reject state. So if it goes into an accept state, that means it halts. If it goes into a reject state, it means it halts. May not halt is the case when it goes into a loop. 
okay there are some curing machines so there are some curing machines that always halt always halt for all possible inputs okay for example we have designed a turing machine for this particular language l is equal to a raised power n b raised power n c raised power n so we have designed a turing machine for this so whatever is the input for that it will the turing machine for this particular language will always halt always halt means that if we give an input to this turing machine it will either accept this input accept means that it will go in an into an accept state or it will reject this input reject it means that it will go into a reject state okay so that means for all possible inputs it halts and there are some turing machines that does not halt for all possible inputs at, as we have seen for the hailstone sequence so these turing machines that always halt for all possible inputs these turing machines are also called deciders okay so let me write a decider here what is uh, first what is a recognizer recognizer is a turing machine any turing machine okay and what is a decider decider is a turing machine that halts halts on all possible inputs halts on all possible inputs so you can say that deciders is a subset of a recognizer okay so decider is a subset of a recognizer and the language of a uh, this decider is called a decidable language decidable decidable language means that for all inputs for all strings that belong to that language those strings take turing machine to a accept state and for all strings that does not belong to that language those strings take turing machine to a reject state so if we have a language l and it is a decidable okay decidable means that it is accepted by a decider so we have a turing machine if w belongs to l then this w takes turing machine to accept a state state and halts and halts and if there is a string that does not belong to l does not belong to decidable language it means that turing machine is taken by this l to reject state and halts so the language of a decider is called a decidable language or it is also called a recursive language it is a recursive language r Fine. and r is a subset of recursively enumerable languages okay so we have this particular thing. okay okay wait i will i will explain this but wait a second so why it is called a decidable language it is called a decidable language because there is a turing machine that will definitely 
say whether the any string any input belongs to this language or it does not belong to this language or we can say it will decide if we are giving an input it will say whether this input is accepted by this turing machine or it is re rejected however for other uh, languages for example if there is a language l and this language is not accepted by a decider but by a, by a recognizer what does that mean so let's suppose it is recursively enumerable and not r not r means it is not a decider a decidable language so what does that mean if w belongs to l so it means tm accepts w accept us w okay and if the w does not belong to l that means tm rejects w or goes into loop goes into loop means we don't know whether it accepts w or it rejects w so that means there is an ambiguity because of this loop ambiguity so whenever there is an ambiguity that means we cannot decide okay but for decidable language we will always decide so we will decide for this case and this case so that is why decider the language recognized by a decider are called a decidable language and the language that are not accepted by a decider are called recursively enumerable languages and from this we have an important observation here that we have a set this set was recursively enumerable languages okay then we have another subset of this so for recursively enumerable languages we have a turing machine another subset of this is a r language so for r we have a turing machine but that turing machine always halts always halts so this turing machine is a decider okay and the subset of this r recursive language is our context free languages and for context free languages we have a push down automata and the subset of context free languages is regular languages and for regular languages we have dfa or we can say an nfa now from this we have a, we have to explain whether r is equal to or not equal to recursively enumerable language or we can say we will see a language we will find a language l which is recursively enumerable but not r so that means we will need a language that is here here means it is recursively enumerable but not recursive okay and we also have to so we have to first find this okay so this is our job one other job that we have to explain is we have to find another language which is not recursively enumerable not recursively enumerable means it is outside this set so we have to see if there is any language such that we cannot have a recognizer for that particular language or we can say we have to find a problem that cannot be solved by a turing machine Now, that means if it is not solved by a turing machine it won't be solved by any computer in the past present or in the future so this is job two so both these things whether A whether there is some language 
that is recursively enumerable but not recursive and also whether there is some language which is not recursively enumerable we have to answer these two things okay so this these two things we have to answer and we will answer we will discuss these two things in lecture number 30 okay so before ending this lecture you have to we all uh, we have to understand the difference between a decider and a recognizer i hope you have got the difference very clear so decider is a turing machine and a recognizer is also a turing machine so it halts on all inputs and for recognizer it may or may not halt and you have to also understand every decider is a recognizer but reverse is not true. is not true. so about these two questions this one and this one we will be discussing this particular these two uh, concepts in our lecture number 32 so let me stop this particular video here Let's meet again in lecture number 32. Till then, goodbye.